Hello everyone, Amanda Gopatil here from Career Services. Welcome to our faculty spotlight interviews. These interviews are intended to provide our students and community members with the opportunity to get to know faculty and how their academic and career paths have led them to Mesa Community College. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Jinder Leindecker from the Art Department. Welcome to your spotlight. Thank you for having me, Amanda. Oh, thank you for being a part of this. So we do have a series of questions for you today and some bonus questions. Um, so our first question we want to throw at you is please introduce yourself uh, and tell us what classes you are currently teaching. Well, I'm Ginger Leindecker and I am in the art department, as Amanda said, and I'm actually the chair of the art department and I'm teaching uh, figure drawing this semester, Art 116. And what is what does that entail? It is uh, how to draw the human form. So we do portraits and figure, we learn muscles and anatomy, um, all kinds of good stuff. Oh, that Ooh. sounds interesting. So what did you want to be when you were growing up? Well, growing up, I wanted to be everything, <laughs> but in particular, I loved science, I loved art, I loved the thought of traveling and exploring. Uh, my grandmother was one of the first um, women art welders in the 40s and 50s and she was prolific in all the types of art that she did from metal sculpture to oil painting so i really had a, a tendency towards art wow that's that's really interesting i find stuff like that very like you wouldn't think that back in the you know like you said 1940s that women would be welders and they would be so profound in that that industry I just find that so fascinating when I hear those kinds of facts. So yeah, I can see why you would find arts, you know, as a big part of your passion. Definitely. Where did you go to college and what was your major? Well, I got my bachelor's degree at New Mexico State University in painting and drawing. I got my master's degree at ASU in uh, painting. And then I got my PhD with Walden University in education, specifically in cognitive development of ad in adults. So how the brain learns from age 18 on up. Oh, that that's also interesting. I like how you kind of blended all different kinds of disciplines, like just the, the fine arts area, the education area, like psychology a little bit. So there's a lot of different disciplines that you've taken apart and applied to the occupation that you have now. Yes, yeah, science and art, love them both. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, did you go to the intentions? Did you go to college with the intentions of getting the job you have now? And what other jobs led you to MCC? Well, I went to college, my undergrad and master's degree, uh, I just wanted to be a painter. So I loved art and thought I would be an artist. But when I was at um, ASU as a grad student, um, I became a TA and started teaching classes to the undergrad. So I started teaching drawing uh, and 2D design and color and, and those types of classes. So by the time I graduated, um, I was able to become an adjunct at um, ASU West, MCC, Scottsdale Artist School. So I kind of just fell into the teaching part of it and I really loved it, being able to help other people develop their, their skill and their creativity to become artists as well. Um, and so it just led me into the position I am in today. And that is the department chair of the art department. Right, and residential faculty. So I was an adjunct faculty member for four years, and then I became residential faculty, and I've been the chair for five years now. Oh, wow, you've you've kind of worked your way up into the different parts of, of art and, you know, yeah. being an instructor. And, and I like that because you can kind of see art from an instructor's perspective, from a supervisor's perspective, and you, you really understand, like, what an instructor needs and what an instructor has to do for students. Yes. So what is your favorite thing about MCC and what is your favorite part about working with our students? Well, I think everybody that teaches at MCC would have to agree that their favorite part is our students. We have amazing facilities too, so I really love that and, and my uh, fellow employees, but our students are so resilient, they're so tenacious. Our students are unique in that, you know, they are juggling 
some of them have two jobs and a family mm -hmm. and they're here because they care and they want to be here and they want to um, get educated. They want to enrich themselves. Uh, and it's amazing to see, you know, how hard they try, um, what they get out of our programs and to watch them go from being a student um, to graduating from us to go on to become, you know, either continue with their degrees or to become a professional and to see them in their careers. It's just so rewarding and it's just a testament to um, how awesome our students are. Yes, no, I love working with them. You know, you grow with them, you learn from them and in turn, sometimes they they show us like those new ways of doing things and how what our future is going to start looking like in different areas. That's so true. I, I've, I've taught at MCC for 21 years now. And, you know, I, I'm not still doing the same thing I was in the beginning because I learned from my students and I learned to grow with them and to um, perfect my craft like I'm trying to help them perfect theirs. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We, we grow and learn from each other. Yes. It's true. What is the most challenging part about your job? I think the most challenging part about my job being a, a department chair, and I'm out, and I'm also right now the chair of the department chair association. I'm kind of in between, you know, the faculty and the administration and the students and our staff, and so um, it kind of spreads me a little bit thin. But at the same time, I think it's a really good opportunity um, to help facilitate positive change in areas, and you know, help our department and help our department chairs get what they need as well as our students. So. So it's a, both a challenge and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kind of, I'm learning that right now. You know, like, even though they're challenges, there's ways to turn them into positive, you know, like you said, opportunities to learn and to grow. Yeah, that's an excellent attitude, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you like to do on your free time? Well, when I have a little free time, <laughs> uh, I'm a paraglider pilot, so I love to go oh. full. And for those that don't know, paraglider is, it's kind of like an elongated parachute that you inflate with air and you kind of run off a hill and then you go fly um, riding the wind currents and thermals and you can be up there for hours or it can be a short ride. And I've been uh, all over the country and to a few other countries doing it. And uh, it's an amazing experience. It's you know, you're flying with birds and it's a kind of a creative experience as well. And I also play banjo and guitar. Wow, you, you've you kind of hit all different <laughs> areas. You're very adventurous and then you're creative in music and in art. So, yes. No, and I see you sometimes when we used to be on campus, we'd go and work out in the, the um, athletics areas. So I know that you just... I feel like you fill your free time with yourself, which is a, with, I enjoy that. So gosh, paragliding, that's, that makes my heart beat a little bit because I'm afraid of heights. So <laughs> I wonder how people do that, but. It's all abstract when you're up really high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what is your favorite course to teach? My very favorite course to teach is Art 118 Art Anatomy. And in that course, the students learn how to draw every muscle and bone in the human body. We learn the veins, mm -hmm. we learn the patterns, uh, we learn what we all share and what makes us each unique um, and how the body functions and performs. And I feel like in that class, I learn more every time I teach it. And um, I, I, watching the students really grow, we learn thing. We learn amazing things about the human body that you wouldn't have even thought of. Um, and so the class is exciting. The students make huge strides in their artwork. A lot of these students want to be character designers or medical illustrators or video mm -hmm. game people or animators. So it's a it's kind of an advanced class. And you can see my uh, oops wrong <laughs> poster <laughs> mine kind of goes with that art anatomy. We even get to go visit life sciences and see the cadavers and actually see mm -hmm. the bones and muscles. So we get to collaborate with other departments, um, which I really love as well. Yeah, I like the fact that you keep, like you said, you get to go to go to the life sciences and you actually get to see a real life like subject of what you can you can draw and what, you know, so you can get it envisioned and then draw it out. That's yeah. very interesting. <laughs> What information would you like to share with our students who might be thinking about enrolling in one of your classes at MCC? 
Well, I would tell the students, first of all, not to be afraid because sometimes people are afraid of art and afraid of life drawing. And I think there's a huge misconception out there that you're either born with it or you not or you're not. You either have talent or you don't. And it couldn't be further from the truth. So we have to develop our muscle memory and our technical skills just like you would if you were learning an instrument or a new language or um, mm -hmm. you know, welding or automotive repair. That you have to get those basics and that skill development. And then we cultivate your creativity at the same time. So the scariest thing for students is the blank page. Um, but what I'd like to say is you, it is a learned skill. It's not just something you automatically have or don't. Anyone can do it. Anyone can have a good time doing it. And you have to give yourself permission to fail. That's how you learn and that's how you grow. So you can't just like put one mark down and say, oh, I'm terrible, forget it. That's too much pressure. We're gonna, we're gonna make mistakes together. We're gonna grow, we're gonna learn and you're gonna see a lot of improvement over the semester and you're gonna love the class. So. That's what I would tell anyone thinking of taking any art class. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes the mistakes make the picture a little bit different. Like oh, it gives it character. Yeah, like Bob Ross says, happy accidents. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I used to watch that with my with my Nana when, we, when I lived down with her. I love him. He just, he makes everything so positive. <laughs> How would you describe your teaching style? Well, I try and help students triangulate the knowledge in their brain. So it's a combination of lecture, demonstration, mm -hmm. hands-on learning activities, and then uh, group and personal critique. So um, trying to guide them through, everything's a step-by-step, -step, um, a lot of positive reinforcement. I feel that in art, you know, you're really putting a lot of yourself into it. So, um, you know, you feel you might feel nervous about sharing it with others. So we try and find positive things and then things to help each other improve and grow. So I try and keep a really positive atmosphere and I try to help students develop their technical skills first and then open up their creativity so that they can say what they want to what they want to um, with those skills that they've developed. What advice do you have for our current and future MCC students who might be thinking about majoring in the area of art? And can you speak to the careers you can get into by majoring in this area? Sure, so I would say that everyone should at least take one art class in their life or an art history class. And because MC is, M MCC is so affordable, um, you, no matter what field of interest you're going into, it's worth it just to take an art class and try it out. And you know, see, you might take a ceramics class, a photography class, a painting class, try your hand at animation or digital art or life drawing, um, just to see you know, what you think. Because you know, some people, art is their passion and they are going to take that class and know that that's what they want to do with their life. Other people, art will be a hobby. It'll be something that gives them enjoyment, something that enriches them throughout their lives. Other people might say, well, you know, I'm probably not an artist, but I'll be a lover of the arts and I'll mm -hmm. enjoy them when I'm, you know, out in the world, looking at museums, looking at architecture, etc. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's, we want everybody to have, you know, a creative spirit and a, a, a a lifelong learning adventure and art is going to be part of that. And for those that, you know, they know that art is what they want to do. You might have been told, you know, you're going to be a starving artist. There's no jobs in art. And that also couldn't be further from the truth. So there, everything that you look around at that's man-made was designed. And so there are so many different degrees that you can get. And then there's so many different types of employment you can get. So for instance, we have um, fine art and in fine art, you can do ceramics, you can do painting and drawing, you can focus in photography. And then we also have a digital photography degree. We have um, graphic design degree. We have an illustration degree. We have an animation degree. And so there's a wide variety of things that you can do with that. Um, some of our uh, alumni have gone on to be uh, character designers. They work in video games. They One of our students is the technical director at Pixar. We have another Another student who um, 
We have a couple students now who are fine artists who are showing galleries and they've had their work all over um, and they're making a living just as fine artists. So, you know, and some uh, we have a few students that went on to be uh, product designers. Um, so there's a, a lot of different things you can do. Um, but I would say that you have to have a good work ethic um, and be willing to um, work hard, especially as a fine artist, you know, you're going to get up every day and and do your craft you're not clocking in anywhere and so if you don't do it nobody's gonna make you do it but mm -hmm. then there's going to be someone else out there who is doing it who might get that gallery representation that you wanted or that show that you wanted into so you've got to develop your work ethic as you're also developing your creativity but there is a niche out there for you, you know, whether you are promoting yourself, whether you're working for a company as a commercial artist, whether you're a photographer or, you know, whatever it is, there are a lot of opportunities out there in art and there's also no salary cap. So, you know, mm -hmm. some, so while some people might need to have two jobs because they want to be an artist and they also do something else. Um, another person might make millions of dollars from their work and, and, and it's just such a wide variety. So um, the, the opportunities are pretty much wide open and endless and you, it's just a matter of figuring out what you want to do and um, how you're going to get there. And that's part of our job too. We have an art marketing class that all of our students have to take. We have internship programs that our students work on in service learning. Uh, and so we try and help students get where they want to go. But I would just advise that, you know, it's out there if you want it. And if and uh, and everyone should at least take one art class in their life and an art history class as well. Yes, I also agree. Uh, I took an art history class and I just never knew what you were missing like you you see the beauty and a lot of things around you after you take something like that because you take note of the different details that you're looking at the colors the the way things move and i really feel like once you take one of those i think you can put it into a lot of other things that you do even if you're not art inclined you know, like you, you can definitely put it into like engineering or business or something. So it's always, it's always a big part of what you can add in. So yes, no, I totally agree with you. Yeah, that's a really good point too, Amanda. Like you, you become more creative in your thinking and, and businesses mm -hmm. want that, you know, they mm -hmm. want you to be a creative thinker who can, who can come up with positive solutions and who's yeah. always thinking ahead and art really helps you to open that up. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's actually one of the things that we teach in resume writing is that there are actually companies and employers are looking for people who have a creative side, who are innovative, who can think outside the box um, and can think beyond just procedure. Like they can question the why because then it opens that company's eyes up to different opportunities to do other projects or to be involved and collaborate with other people. So that's actually something I you like you said, I would recommend that people do is get in tune with that creative side of you because it will be such a bonus for them to have when they do start applying for jobs. So yes. Well that is all our questions for today. But we do have some bonus questions for you. Um so I would like for you to pick a number one through 50. I'm go all out and say 50. Hope I don't have to ask 50 questions. <laughs> I, wow, this is, no one's answered this one yet. So this is good. <laughs> if you could have dinner with any famous person, dead or alive, who would it be? Oof. Any famous person. Well, that is a really wide open question um i'm trying to decide whether i'd want to be with a, a political activist or a, a social justice activist or uh or an artist or a relative <laughs> um let's see <clears throat> i think i might like to sit down with Rigoberta Menchu, who is a political activist um, in her country, who who 
grew up on uh on the Finca farms and there was a lot of social injustice and she worked her way up to become a political activist and to talk about the resilience and what it took to actually make it um, from such humble beginnings to changing countries and changing the way the world thinks. Oh, I love that. I like that answer, especially now in, in the, the kind of environment that we're in, you know, we're always looking for ways to make things work for everybody looking for that equity in it yes definitely okay so one more question with the exception of 50. with the exception of what of 50. okay <laughs> let's see one through 49 what would you pick oh one more okay uh let's go with 28. Twenty-eight. What's one career you wish you could have? Oh, I would love. So I already talked about science. I would either love to be like an astrophysicist or a microbiologist, just something to do with or nano or work with nanotechnology. Something like that would be amazing. And uh, I would love to be able to combine art and science in that way. Nice. I like that. Okay, well, thank you so much, Ginger, for participating in our faculty spotlight. This is such a wonderful opportunity for students to get a peek into a field of interest and gain some very valuable knowledge from your personal experience. Be sure to check out our other faculty spotlights. Be safe, stay healthy, and go Thunderbirds. Go Thunderbirds! <laughs> <laughs>